Hey, it's Chris, Leisure Games. Let's do this. Round up this week, a little bit of everything, a little bit of Game Found, a little bit of Kickstarter, a little bit of everything in between. I'm going to try and do some updates too, although we just had a bunch of big campaigns end, so there's going to be very little updates in terms of previous campaigns from, uh, you know, big names and big money-wise going on. So if you're interested, let's talk about it. Let's do it. Let's see uh, sort of what's out there. If you missed earlier in the week, a couple should you backs. Hopefully they were helpful. Hopefully they were informative. As I said in those videos, though, my goal with the should you backs is I don't want to say anti-hype. It's not anti-hype, but it's I try to give you both sides of things to not make it pure hype. Why you may like the game, why you may not like the game. Try and give you as much balance as I can. Pros, cons. So hopefully I'm going to be doing more of those because honestly, I kind of like doing them. They fit well with this going on up here. But anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for putting up with me. We're almost at a year. So that this a year later this month. So special video coming for that. Special Patreon video, all that stuff. Let's do this. That's not why you're here. First up is Pyramid Land. Pyramid land this is an abstract stacking game where you want to be the first person or the person who's able to stack the most of their balls on this pyramid shaped pegboard and the balls are slightly variously different shaped different colors but the concept is the first one that cannot place a ball causes the game to end and whoever has the least amount left wins and there are different ways you can set up. They actually say taking off pegs can be part of the additional gameplay as well. Colors don't matter because you can mix and match on the main game if you want to play at that. But you can also play other games that use this similar setup. And then what else you can do is just here are the uh, nuances to the game itself. Has to be touching the previously placed ball. Ball's at a higher level. Once you can't do that, go until the next person. And then whoever places all of their balls first wins. If you fail to place the ball successfully, game ends. Variations, they have different sizes. So I think originally, actually, they are all the same size, but you have the variation of size as well. Um, you can play the other standard games that are popular uh, around the world as well. And let's see, early bird, 30 backers. Okay, uh, you can get the ball changed to, to a different kanji on there. Two colors ball edition, so three colors. 46 bucks that's more expensive than i was thinking but for wood nowadays i'm not surprised uh it's a nice uh straightforward abstract high quality wood pieces uh if that interests you especially from someone who's uh created 18 other previous projects already seems like a solid uh well thought out project check it out next up we have another foreign game now this one's only a third of the way it's got 300 of 900 dollars playing with animals competitive card games fun combos zoo Animals are living in harmony. Want everybody to play hide and seek. So try to find the hidden animals before the park opens. Uh, who can ever complete the zoo the fastest? Feeling of combos. So what are you actually doing? I have no clue. Four, five different cards. And that's all he sort of goes through in that animation. First person to fill their breeding area with animal cards wins. Uh, the rest will be ranked in the number of uh, cards in those said areas. So what are you actually doing? Shuffling, face down deal eight cards to a person, and then simply turn them over. If you don't turn over one that you already own, keep going. If the same is turned over, end your turn. If you have the same that's in your hand, your turn is over. Discard the flip cards of the discard pile, and then turn over uh, from the deck from the empty spaces and fill it back up. And then rinse and repeat. There you go. That's it. That's a little more. But if you want to check it out, playing with animals. There you go. So just so you know that I wasn't making this up last week on the upcoming video, Ananuki, Warrior Gods, the board game. I wasn't making it up. It's out there. It's got four people backing it, even though I could find next to no information on it. And they've got general descriptions of it here. Um, components that you're getting, rewards, a little bit of everything, a little bit of mechanics and rules, but not a ton. And that's about it. <laughs> so uh, that's why it's got four people right now. But see, I tell you guys like it is. <laughs> Next up is Toxic People. Uh, already over 100% of the funding goal. Almost at 200% here. Uh, poker style party game. I don't cover a lot of party games. But um, they're just not for me really. But this is a two to six player. 15 minutes to learn. 36 minutes to play. 
draw poker style party game. Bluffing, sabotage, and toxicity. I don't I don't know how I feel about that, especially with the language um, on here already. So I, I guess you're going to be just doing poker hands. And you're doing bluffing. So they have 10 action cards. And you can choose 10 out of the 15 that you want to play with, uh, that you're starting with. Yeah, I don't know. This is, I mean, this is a party game that has language that I'm not really a fan of from that side of things. It's not exactly what I would call family friendly, but it's definitely something different in terms of poker and bluffing and party, which I haven't seen a lot of. So if you want to check it out, that's all I'm going to cover on it, but that's Toxic People. Next up is Age of Trains. I covered this now uh, the last two weeks because they got delayed. Uh, Retro Future Train Game. And they say, although this is a train game theme, this is definitely more of the worker placement with uh, variable setup and variable board. And so you can see a little bit of what it is. It's more of the uh, less of the just pick up and deliver that you may be more used to from the train side of things. Uh, it is uh, post-World War II as you're trying to uh, deliver cargo and develop the industry in this post-war setting. Uh, if it's fun in 48 hours, you get a service pack for free. Okay, so here's what you're getting a little bit. And those are all the images that we saw sort of pre-campaign. How were you playing? Up to five rounds, two to four players. Additional maps uh, are what they're going for as well. And then what are you actually doing on your turns? First up, you are moving. So performing it by placing your trainer on the board, picking up cargo and completing, you know, a little bit of pickup and deliver there. Second thing is you're upgrading, and that is one of the four ways you can upgrade your train to make yourself more efficient. And then you can get contracts, which are going to give you rewards for bringing certain goods certain places. Then last, you can have selling, selling your cargo. So um, then you have selling your cargo and investing in the chosen ports around the area. So by doing all that stuff, obviously winning it, Kickstarter exclusive, a uh, little addition here, leverage cards, train meeples. Um, yeah, there you go. There's not a whole lot of other media, so I don't see any gameplay like I, I or a rule book. Maybe I missed it. I mean, it's a good concept. It's trains. It's not overdone at this point. And definitely from a train side of things, we see more of the straight up like 18xx, that sort of thing, like train-ish game. And so it definitely is different than what we would have normally thought of when someone said a train game. But uh, without a lot more information on there, I can see why it's only got about $5,000 right now. We'll see if it funds. It's about a third of the way there after just 24 hours. Uh, so we'll see where it goes. Next up, we have Old Salt. Again, uh, you know, about a third of the way funded as a different type of game, a swashbuckling gateway game, it says, in sort of a war game, uh, ship battling form, if you will. And you are taking the role of a captain with your fleet and trying to conquer the most islands through various manners. And you can see here a little bit about what you actually doing. You're constructing your fleet, moving it over grid based movement, die rolling for firing, as well as like I said, capturing enough islands to win. There's asymmetric factions that you're going to be choosing from. And it's got just a sort of a, a relatively pleasingly minimalistic aesthetic from that side of things. Let's see what it is here. Okay, so $59 for a copy of the base game and stretch goals, 15 to 20 bucks for shipping to me. What is this? This is Naval Overhaul Kit. That's expensive, but it's basically a wooden upgrade for everything. Okay, brick and mortar stores, the ships themselves, uh, color and shape different. So colorblind friendly from that side of things, which is nice to see. Uh, tells you a little bit of how they are asymmetric as well as the factions here too. Um, interesting concept so far and how to seize, how to play it. Um, wow, a lot more videos than I was expecting. I didn't really know too much about this, but there is a ton of content here if you want to actually see what this is. So check it out. Um, yeah, something I am not interested in all from a war game side of things, but it looks much more approachable and uh, accessible than I was expecting and that the whole purpose of it is in the first place. So if you're interested, check out Old Salt. Next up is Teneris RPG 5e. Now, again, I think you're seeing a little bit of the 5e. I think, think you're seeing a little bit of the FOMO. And I think you're seeing a little bit of people that just really love uh, Teneris and Arena, sort of the mythos and the whole concept. I guess I would be interested to see. I haven't looked at this page too much, but I mean, they're at almost a million dollars under 24 hours here, which is really impressive. 
Uh, I didn't cover this on the upcoming video because I wasn't sure, honestly, how much board game material there was going to be. I knew about it. I knew there was going to be an early bird. I knew there was going to be RPG. But, you know, if it's not really board game related I, and even just slightly board game tangential, I try to focus a little bit more on that side of things. I know, right? Me focus. But there is clearly a you can order like almost all of the stuff. Now, how much exclusive stuff? I don't know. But you can piecemeal it if you want. And there's also an all in early bird down there on the bottom of the pledge levels because that's about the only thing i looked at on this but this huge dragon miniature which they say is somehow only going to be like 30 bucks is free for the first 24 hours if you're backing so that's also why i think you're seeing so many people back because uh early birds now what's going to happen when the early bird is done that's always the most interesting tale of how good your product is uh yeah i mean it's it's 5e it's 5e it's going with 5e so you can play it with 5e which is super accessible having played 5e myself from Dungeons and Dragons. Now it says here free today. Any pledge over seventy dollars gets you this free mini, twenty nine dollar value. I mean that's a big mini for twenty nine bucks, and hugest mini in our minis collection. Automatically added in the backer kit if you're you know under w pledge number whatever. And what are you getting here? I mean this is all of the source book stuff: journeys, dungeons, uh, classes, expert classes, everything there that you're gonna possibly need. So they even say interesting NPCs, uh, even solo solo mode RPG, GMless adventure pack. That's interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, cheaper, sooner, great. Digital, you can get that as all of the RPG stuff is doing lately. You can get the hardcover, which is, yeah, I mean, which is usually about twice the cost. All of that stuff for 69 The Essentials is getting you some of this map too, as well as some of the other... This is the dragon miniature that we're talking about. This is the other exclusive classes pack. And then we start to get into, okay, you just want the miniatures and the cards for like your own D&D. Uh, you want the super kit, which contains a whole load of stuff of everything. And then you can get the games bundle uh, for, I mean, this is pretty much everything for games. Now, the question is, are you getting the stretch goals from these games? Are you getting all of the extras from these games? Or is it just those core four for $289 plus, you know, this thing, but that's a lot. That's a lot of money. And so that's why I wasn't sure how much I'd be interested in it because the rest of this is not really my forte. The rest of this is really, you know, RPG. And it's hard to judge an RPG, I feel like, based on looks alone, based on even reading it sometimes because RPGs more than anything else are player and group dependent, even heavier more so than board games. Uh, they run down here through the classes pack and what you're going to get in the villain pack and things like that. The map, the mystical pack, so a GMS adventure. That's a pretty cool looking monster, Penumbral, pretty freaking sweet. Signature monster from Teneris. I mean, I, I regret a little bit not getting in on Teneris. I canceled my pledge for that, and I had Arena, the first uh, Kickstarter, but I just, it just for some reason didn't click with me. And I was all in for the gameplay and the dragon collection on the second time around, even going possibly for the painted ones. And I just, just something held me back, something nagged, and I went on uh, just and canceled it. So it looks like you can get the painted add-ons. Now, I'm not seeing some of the other stuff for Teneris, so I'm not sure. It looks like you're getting all of the usual stuff like I just questioned. Um, yeah, and they're just adding more miniatures, basically, for and more stuff for the RPG. So, I mean, all in all, I mean, it looks solid. I mean, they have a good reputation for a reason. But the question is, if you missed it, are you going to be getting your money's worth here? Or are you better buying off? The secondary market from someone who's getting Teneris or the core from that side of things. And if you really like this 5e, I mean, I didn't see a ton talking about what made some of the 5e like this separating it out. Like why this as opposed to all the other 5e RPG uh, supplements that are out there on Kickstarter because there are other ones that it raised just as much or more. So that's an interesting conversation. I can't do that justice though, so I will just move on. But that is Teneris RPG 5e. Check it out. Next up is Three Tail. Now, again, this was one that I was wondering about in terms of what it was going to look like, what the price point was going to be, as I talked about it last week, and what the funding goal is. I mean, this is not insubstantial. Eighty-two thousand dollars for a funding goal. They're at thirty-four, which I mean, thirty-four is most of the, is bigger than all of those other small indie ones that I saw. But this is also less than half of what they need. Now, the biggest question that we talked about in the upcoming video from last week was: this has a strange three-player count. And it says for one and three players. So you can't play it with two is apparently how I'm reading that. 
and you're going through this this round this cycle phases of things from past present and future which are each going to have different mechanics and how you interact with things from how you are drafting your healers to how you're utilizing your heroes how you are enabling or enacting the destiny or changing the destiny of your heroes as you go and that was the big question of what that was going to look like so here it looks like we're doing miniatures uh the five miniatures there that they talk about as your heroes uh dice tokens sure okay great uh level ones level two level three battle cards treasure cards so what else do we have here i mean i'm seeing a lot of cool stuff in terms of these lands and paths and that sort of thing but where is the gameplay element hero drafting then you're putting tiles down that you're going to be venturing across in the past phase moving collecting these treasures uh use transporters altars uh battle and quests so what are the battles and quests looking like? I don't see that yet. Tableau building. So your statistics and your talents are upgradable. Um, black cubes are for speed. Blues are spirit. Reds are shavitsa. That's the, the special talents that you can unlock as that character. Uh, when an artifact, you draw three, choose one uh, are the artifacts that you can keep. Different slots for different uh, different types. Head, hands, feet. Here's the prophecy phase, the, the present, draw three prophecy cards, pick a hero to play with, uh, develop your character, present phase, which of the three prophecies was fulfilled, future phase is a goal you need to do. So they already have the rulebook in a bunch of languages, that's good. Tutorial, daily goals, a lot of quotes here from the usual peeps, given some hype, expansion for an extra 30 euros 30 euros so what is the price point out of this 70 euros for ooh the core now if that had been core plus expansion that'd be something but that's 120 dollars. i guess that's the reason why uh that's a lot of money that's a lot of money for this type of game i mean i may have to watch a little bit of gameplay or take a look at that rule book because 120 dollars. that's more than the deluxe uh mythic mischief uh from iv games that i'll be talking about here in a little bit and so that's not inconsiderable so maybe that's why it's having trouble i mean it looks like a great concept i'm gonna have to look at it more i'll click remind me uh because i want to check out the rule book and to see what you're actually doing but again like i said that one or three player count is very tough and i think that's the other possible thing that could be really hampering it so uh if you're interested though check it out three tail next up we have house pets versus aliens this is a different take on war it's sort of a press your luck war game and it's really interesting because this has $20,000. Like, this is insane. Like, is this by somebody who has a following? Because that's a lot of money. I don't know who this uh, Nick is. Oh, Awkward Yeti. Never mind. There you go. That's probably the reason why. It's a simple, uh, straightforward war game with a twist in the sense that you can play additional fighters when you're doing war. But if you bust, essentially, if you blackjack over 10, then you automatically lose that round. And then you also have five modifier cards that you're going to be getting at the bidding that will have to last you the whole length of the game that you can use at any point. You can use as many of, but they aren't reusable. And so that's the game. You can get a couple expansions down here, um, but you can play it with four people. That's about it. That's about it. So that's the whole campaign. So if you're interested, um, there you go. House Pets versus Aliens. Different take on war. Okay, so let's get back to it. Now we have Republic of Jungle. This is what they say is a new take on the social deduction game, and it's an interesting hybrid. Now, it's taking a lot of things you may know, but it's doing it now more on, this is like basically a solely app-based situation. They're taking what you know from like Secret Hitler and Resistance and putting it into an app essentially with a little bit of a GM and a twist on it. It is very much reminiscent of Secret Hitler with animals. And the big difference being when you decide to approve or not approve the agenda, essentially, um, in this game, it's you want to leak a uh, blunder or not leak the blunder, cover it up, depending on if you're the loyalist to the president or not, is that the one of the loyalists, if it gets leaked, gets a special power that can affect things. It's something different. It's, it's Secret Hitler with a twist, basically. The only difference is that it's basically all app-driven. And so you can play not only in the same place, but you can play anywhere together as long as you all have the same code because only one person needs to have a copy. And that is the other big difference. And it's a very interesting concept because it's from five to 10 people. And if you have five to 10 people that could easily network and do this from afar, that's great. But I think also part of the problem is, you know, part of the reason we get into this is because we want that interaction. 
that direct face-to-face -face interaction. Otherwise, I would play a video game. And they talk about it. This is from two guys who were former software developers. Uh, they said from Microsoft and, and Twitch. And they put it out on Steam. And that's what they're going through. And it's taking all of that and putting it into this format. So that's that's essentially what it is. They've got a bunch of videos down here from everybody that has at least 20,000 uh, <laughs> subscribers. Uh, all of the biggest channels uh, you can see here. And it's basically that in that sense. And a few rounds, whoever wins three out of five rounds uh, wins overall in terms of which is which. And it gives you a little bit of the regular roles and the different roles that can be assigned depending on what side you're on. So again, there's a little bit more of a twist there with Secret Hitler. And sorry, I missed that, that they actually do describe some of the powers here. And they're going to show more. So that's basically it. Uh, so if you like that, this is going to be something along those lines. So Steam Key, Beta Key, Steam Key, Soundtrack, Digital Art Book, Discord, Stylish, all that more stuff two of everything. So, I mean, for a digital implementation, it's 15 bucks. So are you okay with that? Are you liking to see something like this? Does this interest you at all? I mean, it's funded. It's got 10,000 bucks. So it's there. It's going to get made. It's going to get funded. It's people are going to get it, but does it appeal to you? That's going to be the real question. And what does it do afterwards? Because that's really the test of something like this, but that is Republic of the Jungle. Next is Kenji's Quest. This is very much RPG in a tabletop format. I mean, this is literally, it looks like the translation of an RPG into a physical form if you were to physically map out everything that you need. And they are 50% of the way funded. And you can see that it's a $49 pledge for the basic, $79 for the core pledge. Now, unpainted, and so you just need to know that because some of the other stuff is available to be painted. The boss bundle, and again, they're they're giving you 12 iconic miniatures, so $80 for 12 miniatures. Take that for what you will. Uh, dragon bundle, the lazy pledge, this is where everything is printed out. Professionally printed and cut components uh, for everything. And that's really what I was talking about up top. And otherwise, this is more almost for the D and D, like, I don't want to say lazy. They're using the term lazy, but D and D lazy. Like if you want to have a lot of that stuff as a visual appealing, you could use a lot of this for that, but they've also made sort of a campaign to go along with it and a character map and a world that you can kind of traverse and chapters that you can go through. I think they say are like five or six chapters and a little bit of everything. You can see all the monsters that you're gonna be getting in terms of the miniatures that I mentioned, and then the dragons painted or unpainted and a little bit of everything else. So again, here's the lazy box that I mentioned. So it's an interesting concept. Um, we've seen a couple other like subscription services that are like this as well. So the question is, what is this going to look like? 88 people though for $20,000. That's a lot of money per person. So uh, it's a little bit more of the D&D &D in a box essentially. If you want to have an easier way to aesthetically appeal to people. And have to do less on your own as a GM. So Kenji's Quest, check it out. Next up, we have a card game called Bunny Brawl, two to four players. Uh, you're going to be playing these bunny cards, and it's a little, it's a big take that game, but it is very different because you have the ability to flip these cards to affect what other people are playing. And the first person to assemble their whole squad is going to win. So you draw your card, play a card, and someone can flip your card, though, to the other side to see, you know, or to cancel, essentially, what it can do. And... It runs through the types of cards in terms of bunnies, uh, holes that they can, you know, uh, escape into, and targets, as well as brawls. And, and they talk a little bit about what those do. Force opponents to randomly pick out a rocket salad, the card that picks decides the fate of the bunny. So, I mean, they could use a little bit more on this page about how it actually plays. Because there's really not a whole lot of info on the actual gameplay. I didn't see a rule book. Maybe I missed it. But that's about it. And... It needs more. I mean, it's it's definitely appealing to that lighter side of like the unstable unicorns and that ilk that has done well on crowdfunding. And we just need more because, I mean, uh, 35 backers, it's almost $100 a backer right now from that side of things. So I don't believe the price point is that high. So early bird, early bird, early bird. Um, again, where is all of the price coming in on this? One person for $700. That's definitely skewing it. 
and 6'4", 131. Okay, but that's Money Brawl. That's all that's really on the page. So check it out if you're interested. Next up, and I have I have a mea culpa. These guys reached out to me a couple weeks ago, and I just completely uh, lost track of it. Limbo, Eternal War. I'm really sorry. I'm going to say that on the video. I, I really mean it. Um, if you guys still want to work something out, let me know. Um, I No. If I'm going to email you back, and we'll figure something out. If you can uh, forgive me for lack of promptly responses, um, I would be happy to work something out with you guys. But let's talk about it because this one is, since they relaunched, they are doing uh, tremendously better. And I think people respond to people who take feedback into account because now I can't count even on the number of one hand that I've seen campaigns relaunch this year and succeed. And we've seen a lot of that lately. And I like seeing that because in the past, I felt like it was try, try again, and people just kept on failing. And now people are understanding, they're doing better, they're listening, but not overly listening. So this is the 1.5 version of Eternal War. This is a big two-player, massive miniature skirmish game. 108,000, they're 20,000 away. So they're already about 83% of the way done right now, which is pretty impressive. 85% if my mental math is right. So let's take a look. I mean, then they have 30 days, so they're going to fund. It's going to be a shock if they don't at this point. So what are we getting? Now, like I said, this is 1.5 version. So army, upgrades, powers, stats, early bird, 48 hours. So maybe that's playing a role. I don't know if they had an early bird on the previous campaign. Uh, free captain miniature character. Uh, you get the upgrade kit if you are a returning backer. Um, 140 bucks. I mean, for the miniatures, for the quality that I've seen online, I think most people were pretty pleased with them when I was reading through initially when backers got it the first time. So that's pretty positive. Uh, starter set, and you're getting the stretch goals. Previous stretch goals. So that's cool. Uh, starter set, there we go. I mean, and these are cool. These are cool looking. Um, at least these, these miniatures up here, the Lord. I'm not sure how I feel about some of the people, but, um... They're very well designed. I like the different poses. I love the horse. I just worry about things like that um, in travel and transit, right? If they're going to break or if they're going to be a little bit too posed, uh, that they're going to be easily, uh, you know, jarred. That's cool. That's really cool looking. Uh, but basically, it's like good guys versus bad guys, if you will. <laughs> uh, so, okay, Initiative Coin is the Kickstarter exclusive. Here's the stretch goal box from 1.0. That's a really cool looking angel right there, Raphael. And then there is the Gluttony. So what is new, I'm assuming? Here we go. Uh, we got a couple new bosses, essentially. The Ice Queen, Yasa, and the Saga of Noadin. So I'm assuming this is just like another faction, a third faction that you could sort of mix in so you're not always playing one versus the other. Uh, social stretch goals, cool. Uh, yeah, and then some money stretch goals. All right. Let's see how to play. Again, rule book. Uh, draft rule book of 1.5. You can see the 1.0 if you really want to. Um, again, like I feel like a game like this would really benefit from someone professional because then you could iron out because that's, I think, sometimes the biggest challenge in a game like this is that the errata sometimes derails people. And you'll see that a lot in the, the Kickstarter, not the Kickstarter, the Board Game Geek comment section. Like some people are willing to put up with that and some people aren't. And I remember seeing a few of those issues but, I mean, if you can iron those out, especially in a, a version where you're offering a lot of the stuff from before, uh, that's that's impressive. Or that's that's encouraging to people coming in at this point. So that they're not, like, behind or you're also not alienating people from the previous. Now, I didn't see the price point of the 1.5 upgrade, so it'll be interesting to see what that is. Uh, build your army. 20-card deck by your army's traits. And, I mean, I'm just not, like, I don't have a lot of experience with Skirmish. I think that's, that's my other hesitancy in games like this. Um, build your army, agreed upon shards. I mean, that's, again, that's my biggest challenge. That's why I really haven't been able to get Star Wars Armada to the table very much. Because, you know, okay, well, set your points and then set your ships, right? Uh, combat, straightforward, move, attack, nuance, abilities, that sort of thing. How you're interacting, all the skills and abilities in the combats, like I mentioned. Here we go. Um, Battle Royale, early bird. Everything essentially is going to cost you 193 and the void early bird. Wow, that's really everything. So that is 266. That's getting you a couple extra boxes the firestorm, the wrath chosen, and the demon dice. Okay, interesting. 
I didn't see those. Okay, here's the upgrade kit. Okay, $25 for an upgrade kit. That's, that's reasonably priced. Heavens Above, that was the other one of the other expansions. Firestorm and Wrath's Chosen. More for each of those other factions. So, there you go. And, you know, about what I would expect for expansions to be priced. There's that early bird Aphroditus that can be put on. And then if you just want this as well, the new expansion or the new faction, if you will. Raphael box, Gluttony box, if you want to get them just separately, if you were maybe like a retail or you picked up on the secondary market. Messengers of the Heavens, Shield Card, Angel Dice, Demon Dice. Yeah. 75 millimeters if you want a full picture or a full version as opposed to just the regular gameplay version. So a couple reviews, King of Average, he's big miniatures, and how to play. What's new? So this is probably the, the part in which I should have skipped to at the beginning. Customize your Lord with more skills. So your Lord has different skills that makes it more asymmetric. And I'm assuming that you can, you know, choose from several so that each game is a little bit different and nuanced. There are basically crystals that are used in the game, but they're adding a new color, which changes uh, sort of your tactics if where you're going to try and defend your crystal from the other person, or if you want to try and use their crystal as your own power. And unit balancing. Okay, I mean, that's the other thing with a 1.5 version. I mean, we saw it with things like Madara too, like where, or 1.1 version, I think, with Madara, where, you know, some units need to be balanced because people thought it was either too hard on one mode or too easy on another. So um, I like that people are going, okay, balance it because, you know, that speaks to believing in your product. Like, hey, we didn't do perfect, but we're willing to adapt. So there you go. What are we looking at? Um, <laughs> hopefully March 2022. Shipping is going to be what it's be at this point. Uh, so there you go. Limbo miniatures. Look solid. You like skirmish. You like awesome looking miniatures. Check it out. Next up, Green Hell relaunching. Speaking of relaunching, I didn't look at this page before I pulled it up right now. They are done as well. And I compared the pages last week in my upcoming video. I looked at both of them and looked at some of the changes and the price point is less. And they were highlighting a little bit at the top of what you can get different in this one. Early bird special. Okay, early bird specials. Now, say what you will. I mean, this should maybe be a topic of another video of mine is how do you feel about early birds? Now, again, because early birds, you've seen it now on more than a couple of these projects where timed early birds, timed early birds, timed early birds. And you'll see that in at least one more of the campaigns that I'm going to cover in this video in a few minutes. Spoilers, mythic mischief but you know that is what we're seeing this is you know robinson crusoe esque to me in terms of a dungeon crawl as opposed to what robinson crusoe is and it's you versus the jungle with your asymmetric characters trying to survive and battle uh survival skills essentially instead of battling monsters <laughs> you're navigating through the jungle exploring interacting trying to find the survivor and trying to have enough resources to survive in the first place and using this sort of Diablo-esque management system in terms of placement and packs to fit them all in and in order just to keep what you need in general. Crafting, building, I mean, it is, I mean, it, it's basically, like I said, Robinson Crusoe, the dungeon crawl to me. Uh, core Pledge, I believe that's less now. Let's see what the price actually is. Uh, yeah, 73 bucks. Yep, that's definitely less. And this is with standees. So, uh, 38 backers again someone in the comment section like there's only 20 people per campaign that look at standees there are but um you know so be it uh standees oh here we go standees with uh the steam key 144 survivor pledge 47 175 so i mean actually this is relatively evenly split through all of these pledge levels that's really interesting i i wouldn't have expected that to all of you commenting out there that they don't need standees or standees don't sell so it's relatively like evenly split between the non-key levels on the standees and the miniatures and the key levels on the standees and the miniatures. So that's that's an interesting phenomenon. I'd love to see more actual statistics on that, but I know I'm in the minority when I want standees in these situations most of the time as a non-painter. So again, he's running through all the scenarios and all the stuff that you're going to be getting. It's, it's flown under the radar. It has not been the biggest IP from a video game port of side of things, and so it just hasn't gotten the hype that some of the others have. It's got enough video on there that you have plenty of information to make a decision. There's a rule book that's going to be available. And, I mean, it just is different. The theme is different. The mechanisms are different. 
it's just whether or not it's for you. I mean, the horror uh, survival genre doesn't do anything for me. I've never played Robinson Crusoe. I have no interest in it. But clearly there is a significant niche from that side of things. And so that's why we're seeing it fund with another campaign that canceled after not funding and now is easily funded. So that's Green Hell, the board game. Check it out. Next up, we have Earthen War. Two-player fantasy game, World War II, going head-to-head -head with your golems on a magical battlefield. And actually, it's World War I because I can't read. So it's just under halfway funded right now. Let's check out what it is. I mean, here are your representative golems and the dice that you're going to be using to manipulate. So essentially what this game is, is something that we really haven't seen before in the two-player dueling uh, strategy, the skirmish side of things, but also just in general, I can't really think of anything mechanistically of how this is working. And it's very interesting because the player has a grid, and let's see if we can find a picture of it down here, uh, of these eight slots that you're going to be putting dice. And depending on the color of the die, and depending on the side or the number of the die, it's going to determine what move or action that it takes. And there's, you know, sides really matter, you know, whether it's in front or behind or to either side or any direction in that sense, because it's going to play out on the map here from that side of things. And it's just an interesting take on things. Let's see. Okay, what are we getting here? The game is going to be the gamer tier. Well, it doesn't say the price there, so let's check it over here. And 35 bucks. Wooden golem figures. Uh, ceramic is 68. Whew! That's a jump up. I didn't realize ceramic was that expensive. A little bit of everything else. Stretch goals. Board art. A few reviews down here. I mean, it's just it's just something completely different. Shipping in Europe seems to be relatively stable and less actually than elsewhere. And then the rest of the world is what it is. So, yep, you charge it afterwards. Yep. So, I mean, I haven't watched any videos. I kind of wish they had the rule book here. They sent it to me. I know the rule book is out there. They sent it to me prior to the campaign as I had sort of inquired about whether or not it was going to be something I'd have time to look at and, and put a video out on them, but I just didn't have time to do so. Uh, so it is out there. There's plenty of people who have looked at it. Check it out uh, if you're looking for something else with dice that involves skirmishing as a two-player game. Uh, Earth and War. Check it out. Okay, now, Mythic Mischief. Game found. $253,000 already. Uh, the big winner of the week by far. Five times its funding goal. 22 days left. If you were following, you got a little bit of a prize or something prior to it. This is an asymmetric up to seven different teams or factions of manipulating books around a library while the library itself moves. The Tomb Keeper is trying to catch you and put all the books back while avoiding getting caught at the same time. So this is, if you have looked at IV Studios' other productions in terms of Veiled Fate or Moonrakers, the quality is top-notch. I'll say that without even going it down any further on the page. I already know that. I've glanced at the page, but I just know from looking and remembering what those other two campaigns were is that they put sort of a standard in terms of their quality. It's not going to be stretch goals. It's not going to be that. They're not going to like upgrade this or upgrade that. It's We're going to do it this way. And that, I mean, that was my big problem with Veiled Fate. That was one of the big problems with my personal of Veiled Fate. I just couldn't pay that much money for that style of game. Like a, a social deduction game. But it was beautiful. Especially the wooden board. was absolutely tremendously beautiful. Now, you're going to see the same thing here. I mean, they're starting with all of the big name quotes up here. Uh, so, as I mentioned last week, they had like sort of a, a con with, with, all of, uh, with the majority of these people all playing it together. And some of these videos and pictures, I think, are from that down here. And again, Moonrakers, Veiled Fate. Um, you know, pedigrees there. So... Uh, pictures and here are some of the factions again the miniatures don't do anything for me uh, but uh, that is what it is at this point so what are you actually getting I, I kind of wish this was further down I mean that's the that's the game found sort of mo where they put like, sort of the pledges and what's in the box at the top but I think I've seen that across all the game found so that's just a universal thing for me and they talk about sort of everything here I think this has all seven factions this is is this the headmaster yeah so this is that pledge right here for $95 and I think, I can't remember which pledge level I'm looking at uh, of getting. Uh, 
but let's see. Okay, so free stuff. You're getting the Ghost expansion, which may not be easily available at retail. Uh, why are you getting it? Headmaster box. This box may only be available. Stoles are all expansions. Extra for 2v2 or 7-player tournaments. 7-player tournaments. And then they also have some gear. Some sweatshirts. Uh, some bags, I think, as well. Again, some more quotes and pictures. The Tomb Keeper uh, guarding the library. The library changes as you're going throughout the game. And you're using your abilities to sort of swap around. They were calling it abstract in here uh, with some of the videos and some of the, the content that was, was put out. I don't know. Like, ab this isn't, I mean, I understand what they're saying when they say abstract. There, there's a theme. <laughs> there is a definitive theme and a definitive mechanism that ties into the theme. So I, I don't view it as like an abstract abstract, right? Uh, when I think of abstracts, I think of GIF. I think of Czar, I think of Yinch, I think of Zertz, I think of even even Santorini, you know, even though I guess that has a theme, uh, or Tak, you know, that's where my mind goes, Hive, where the, the I don't know, it's, it's splitting hairs, but it is, I mean, it is mechanistically speaking, but um, it, I guess it just doesn't, you know, it's, it seems more thematic to me than purely abstract. Um, action, dice, mischief points, you're trying to get 10 mischief points, I believe. And you have abilities, like I said, asymmetric team abilities that you're going to be using to manipulate everything on the board. Upgrade your faction, sort of with your dies moving along your player board and getting more unique abilities. And uh, winner is 10 or when the game ends, whoever has the most. Bunch of videos. Here's the asymmetry. Again, seven unique factions, premium, high replayability. I mean, I agree with that. Seven factions. If you're playing anywhere from two to four players. Yeah, I would agree with that. I guess the question, and, and I guess if you're going to call this an abstract, if you're going to call this an abstract, which again, I splitting hairs, but I'll go with it. I, I, you know, when I talk about those other ones, it made me, you know, realize that, yeah, some of those other ones do have themes. So let's talk about it then as an abstract. As an abstract, there are not many good abstract games that play with three or four. So I guess maybe that's a better divider in terms of what I think an abstract is. A lot of abstracts, many abstracts, almost all of the good, super good abstracts are two player games because three and four player games usually aren't abstract and they're more thematic and take that and chaotic, not perfect information. And I guess from this side of things, as opposed to those other games that I mentioned, this doesn't have perfect information, does it? Because you have abilities that the other people may not be able to know about or may not fully realize at all times. And so I guess maybe that maybe is a better differentiation. But again, splitting hairs, too much on abstracts. You guys are probably bored by that now. Uh, free ghost expansion. Okay, so $95. You're getting the box. You're getting everything. You're getting the expansion, expansion, expansion. I mean, that looks like, this looks like the pledge to get right here. Yeah, the headmaster pledge. Uh, the professor pledge is okay. I mean, you're just not getting the two extra expansions, right, in the big box. So two extra expansions, 59 so you're looking at 36 bucks for two expansions and a big box. Eh, single factions, 18 bucks. If you want to split it just in that and say the big box is included in that price, that's not bad. That's not horrible. Again, that's probably more. And I guess the biggest concern is, you know, if you're going to, again, going to call this an abstract, $95 abstract. <laughs> $95 an abstract, you know, like I better be getting like the premium talk version. But it's it's super intriguing. Now, you again, you have some of the other stuff, the bag, the notebook, the hoodies, uh, a little bit of everything there. Uh, yeah, so those are the pledge levels that you can kind of see. And they offer some of the add-ons just down here. And they're selling them for $20 uh, separately here. So as I just did the mental math, you're saving at least $2 if you don't even include the big box there. So uh, there you go. Those pins are kind of cool, actually. I kind of like a couple of those pins. Anyway, so uh, they've got a couple stretch goals uh, here. Uh, main theme going at 300,000. Uh, core factions give you a little bit of the factions themselves and the upgrades. Uh, zombies, vampires, Franks. Okay. I was just watching another show the, tonight. I was watching The Expanse, and they're like, you know, it was another another cultural reference where he called something uh, Frankenstein, and then he got corrected that Frankenstein was actually the scientist, not the monster. Factually correct there. Um, expansion, the witches, the trolls. And I mean, I, I'm sure there's thematic incorporation there. Glow in the dark miniatures. Okay, that's fine. Ghost faction's not going to be. And, and I'm assuming these are telling maybe a little bit more than just production of what the mechanics are of some of those. 
Uh, digital soundtrack, okay. Solo mode, support the future. Oh, the next three expansions. Interesting. Okay, I might actually take that and submit it. Uh, that's actually the coolest pin I think I've seen. A bunch of versions, a bunch of online stuff that they're doing. And this is the other positive thing I've seen now to this week where productions are already submitted. Now, you're still not going to get it, I believe, until like June 2022. I believe if I'm remembering this correctly when I looked at it, July. So that's that's a long time for production. I mean, production is going to take six months. Whew, that's a long time. I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't really know how long production takes. It's a long time in my head as a non like manufacturing like game designer production you know that's whole thing but it's probably about right so the shipping is good if you're gonna get that bigger price uh at the bigger pledge for 16 bucks again i mean that's that's 111 dollars though for an abstract an asymmetric abstract so you just got to be aware um i'm i'm seriously tempted by this i hate to say it because if you've seen my other uh videos on this i whether or not it's abstract or asymmetric factions, I love it. So I love abstracts. And if you put a theme with it, uh, it's even better. So we'll see. A uh, bunch of videos, bunch and bunch of videos. Holy cow. Bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch. And thank you for putting it at the bottom. Now, I wish maybe there was a rule book. I think actually I got the rule book sent to me. So I'm going to give the rule book a look at this weekend. And I'll let you know maybe more. I'll probably put out a should you back this video. I think I'm actually getting a prototype as well sometime in the mail. So if I get that, I will definitely put out a video uh, with my thoughts on it hands on. Uh, because again, this is this is stuff that I personally enjoy. It just is. So one to four players. I guess, yeah, that, that would be my biggest concern. And I guess I would wonder if some of the videos down at the bottom address that is and we saw one of the videos if you were carefully looking at the screenshots on the thumbnails that some of them had uh, let's see what one was it uh four here so that would be my biggest concern is as an abstract you're playing with four people you're not gonna have perfect information you're not gonna have perfect control so uh does it play as well with two as it does with four because i as an abstract lover i want two but as a chaos creator and a chaotic manipulator and watching things burn like I like to do sometimes in these types of games, I want it to play better with three and four. So all in all, though, I mean, this is by far the most tempting for me, uh, maybe secondary to Black Rose Wars at this point. But um, that's Mythic Mischief. And if you're interested, check it out. That's it. That is the roundup for this week. Hopefully that was interesting, entertaining and somewhat thought provoking, maybe not thought provoking. Let me know what you're interested in. As always, um, like I said, I was gonna, um, flex a little bit and maybe I'll do it in the next video tomorrow for the upcoming of, uh, two of the preview copies. Actually, I'm not allowed to show you one of the preview copies. I think yet I'm not allowed to say that I have it. So I'll show you maybe one of them. Uh, I, I don't even know why I'm saying that. I'll tell you, I have 11, uh, the football, uh, manager. And so I'm going to have a video out for the campaign next week. I'm hopefully going to have it done this weekend. So maybe that's going to be my Sunday or Monday video. If you're interested. I'll have another uh, Should You Back as well for Black Rose Wars. And uh, just a few other smatterings. I've got another review or two coming out as well. So a little bit of everything. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want. And, you know, I'm going to try. We're going to do one of those uh, uh, supporter emails, subscriber emails. I'm going to do one of those videos hopefully in the next week or so. See what happens with that. So. <laughs> Weirder stuff has happened. Uh, anyway, hope it's a good Friday for you. Hopefully uh, your weekend is better than mine because I'm working all weekend, Labor Day weekend. Awesome. My kids have a four-day uh, weekend and I am working every single freaking day. Nine in a row. Blech. So hopefully yours is better than mine. Have some good food. Play some games. Do better than me. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. See you later.